Yeah, I... I... Hello? <laughs> and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer here in the temple, coming to us straight from LARPT.com, and and a man who has who has the Dietman files under under his belt, now go now going the superhero route with the way of a hero. The one and only Terry Crew. Hi everyone. Yes. <laughs> yes, without an S. I'm pretty sure you've I'm pretty sure you've heard that joke a thousand times already. Oh, even more than that. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. <laughs> so, a bit of a tradition around here is to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. The, if you'll forgive me for for referencing the trope, the origin story. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the for the way of the hero, the well, origin not for, story. Not for the way of the hero just yet, but for. Your introduction to role playing games, period. Oh, oh, geez. Uh, so I actually got started with role playing games from starting with LARP, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, I had just moved to a new town, didn't know anybody. Uh, went on meetup.com, found a LARP group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was in like Boffer and doing like amp guard and, and things like that. And uh, some of those people invited me to participate in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And that was my introduction to role playing. Mm -hmm. And do you remember, do you remember what, do you remember what edition of D and D it was that, that you were introduced to? Oh, 5e. Ah. Which, that brings me to the question of how of your first introduction when it came to supers in general and um, supers in a role playing sense. So, I've tried playing uh, mutants and masterminds, and I, I was invited by friends of friends from the same group that I was introduced to to Dungeons and Dragons and role playing with. And had a great time, but it was always so mechanics focused. Um, I always thought that was really interesting because I would have these concepts and things I wanted to do in my mind, but the rules never could really play uh, with what I was imagining. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And and go ahead to play devil's advocate on that kind of thing a bit. Um, I think so. I think some of that comes with the territory of of a superhero game simply because of the fact that there's so much you have to account for when it comes to variety of powers. Oh, 100%. Oh. It's not, it's not like you can't really you can't really do a sto you can't really do a story game. Well, you pro you probably could do a story game with su with superpowers, but it's but the scope would have to be very limited. Just because of all the stuff that superheroes have been over the last fifty years. Yeah, I mean the um, it and it plays a lot into like the the dungeon master style mm -hmm. of how the game is running. You know, are you trying to tell a difficult story where people are going to fail as heroes? Because when you're playing with superheroes, everybody wants to do something amazing. You know, and so it's really setting people up for those epic moments. Mm -hmm. And giving them that time to shine, and uh, while also telling a challenging story that's not just we instantly solve this issue with I don't know laser vision or whatever the situation might be. Yeah. <clears throat> now, with the way of the hero, since you mentioned mutants and masterminds being very mechanics focused, is the way of the hero your answer to answer to that issue? It is. Um, so I was introduced to Powered by the Apocalypse, mm -hmm. which is an incredibly simple system. You just roll the 2d6 and add your applicable stat. They have a number of different like uh, abilities that you can add on, but everything basically goes off of those 
basic stats to tell a collaborative story with others. Mm -hmm. And so the way of the hero takes that as a basic and then adds components of uh, creating rivalries and deadlock abilities where if two amazing superpowers happen at the same time, what actually happens, you know, with conflicting abilities? Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the concept of what we call heroic moments, which are used for if your character can absolutely not fail something. So it gives, uh, much like we were talking about, how players want to be uh, given that ability where they can truly make a difference. And there are key pivotal moments that, you know, they absolutely cannot fail because this is what it means for them to play a hero. Mm -hmm. um, so we've added in components and things like that to really make the system where it is telling that collaborative story of these heroes that are coming in to solve not just uh, combat-heavy role-play scenes, but also moral dilemmas, mysteries, uh, a variety of different module types that you could really run with it. Now, with that with that in mind, I know you've I know you said that it relies on on the PBTA system, but I get the feeling you don't you don't consider this a PBT a um, PBTA world in the in the same way that um certain projects like Action Movie World are a are a action movie version of PBTA. Yeah. So one of the big problems that I just have with that system and its base form is that it doesn't really lend to a system of a campaign, if you know what I mean. Like with D&D with, uh, &D and Pathfinder and games like that, you can play these long-term games where you build characters that have long stories and growth and development, and they learn and grow over time just like, like people do. And uh, with Powered by the Apocalypse, it's always been really easy to pick up and play, but not really campaign-oriented. So one of the things that we've done with this system is created a system... I, I just said system like four times, I apologize. Don't but, worry, it's going to get brought up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we've added elements where your character can grow over time. Mm -hmm. And so the way that we did that was through a series of secondary stats. So if you're new to the game and you just want to pick up and play, okay, that's fine. But if you want to play a campaign where your character grows and accumulates like wealth and endurance and all of these other abilities um, that you would as a, as a normal person, you can invest in that. And it allows for increased powers over time. Of course, uh, the stronger heroes get, the more challenging it can be for a GM uh, because... Uh, that's just the way heroes are. They're epic and amazing, and you have to create villains that are just as incredible as they are, so that there's always that element of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So with with that kind of, and I will I will admit that I've seen I've seen my fair share of attempts when it came when it comes to trying to do something PBTA related in supers. Um. A lot, a lot of time, a lot of times, the superpower itself is just is just a hand wavy description, which, in my in my not so humble opinion, um, isn't isn't going to be all that satisfying for people, because they want they want to see th they want a light, I think a lot of people want to see a marriage of the mechanics and the narrative. Um, yeah, like the bi the big example that comes to mind for me is masks. Which has the superpower as a as a nar as a narrative? Just write it down in this little block, which is not terrible, but I wouldn't. But it's not great either. And yeah, with that, with given what you mentioned regarding a campaign, which I I can definitely I can definitely see. Um, and I'm get I'm guessing that when you're when you're referring to a campaign. If I'm, to, just to see if I'm on the right wavelength with this, you're thinking of a campaign the same way, a in this in the manner of say a season of a television show. Yeah, one hundred percent. Given that now, given that, I know you in the Kickstarter page it mentions different superpower types. 
but would it be accurate to say that you're not necessarily using the playbook type of type of characterization that PBTA does? So I, I think that there has to be a happy medium to it. Mm -hmm. um, some parties are going to be incredibly creative on their own mm -hmm. and the way that they utilize their powers. And the Powered by assist Apocalypse system is really good at saying, like, you don't have to be creative. You can just pick up this book and play it however you want. Mm -hmm. And so the powers are designed so that if you want to just pick up and play and have to put no thought into creativity, like you just want to play uh, a hero with one, two, three, four, five, you know, one of over 200 powers that we've created, like you can do that. Mm -hmm. But in the same sense, we've added a GM guide and it gives you tools and resources for if you want to modify these powers. So it gives you that, I don't want to say cookie cutter because 200 cookies isn't, isn't really a pattern, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, it gives you the ability to create your own, modify what's existing, or if if it's just you want to play for a night in a single game, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a really robust system in that sense. And we've had, at this point, over 50 different people playtest the system. And from a variety of different types of players, you know, some were were really interested in gung gung ho at creating uh, vibrant superheroes that really envision maybe what they imagined as a child, you know, running around through a park and swinging a stick. Um, whereas others were like, okay, I have this hero in my mind that already exists, and I'd like to make a mirror of that in the system. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. And. Could you give me could you give me a few examples of su of um of superpower types and where what the dividing line is between superpower types and well powers? So the different types there are 10 different powers in each of them and some of them are like if you are a trained individual kind of like if you think of Batman like he doesn't have any superpowers himself except for the fact that he has amazing tech, and he spent a lot of time like studying different languages, martial arts, things like that. So that's an example of one. But what we've done with each of the, uh, the superhero types is given them one ability that is so unique that none of the other superhero types have that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, when you think of superheroes, you, you have to have one that's strength-based. We have darkness, light. Uh, we just unlocked a new one, which is cosmic type. Mm -hmm. uh, there is technological, biological, uh, just pretty much everything you can probably imagine exists. Mm -hmm. And with the, with that, can, when I when I first saw super superpower types. A couple of things that immediately came to mind were the um, archetype combinations in the venerable City of Heroes MMO, as well as the templates that you saw in Mutants and Masterminds. You know, Paragon, Energy Controller, Gadgeteer, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, is that kind so, of where it leans? So, I would say it's a combination of a million different things and a lot of original components. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is th the world itself, like one of the first modules that players are introduced to is a licensing exam where they learn what it's like to be a hero in that specific world. And that's orchestrated by the GM to calibrate the players on what's acceptable behavior versus was it, what is it? Mm-hmm. So from there, you see like pop culture references of like My Hero Academia oh, yeah. and, uh, and different things like that. System-wise, uh, the power types are not just one, one lane categories or roads where you can only have specific type of powers. They're just used to give you guidance so that if you wanted to play like one specific type of character, again... Uh, and just pick up the game and play it, you totally could. You could just put, pick uh, 10 powers from a, 
a specific class and, and run with it. Um, so it's not really like the guidelines for a specific type of character as much as just ideas. Um, so in in that sense, I can see how it would borrow from games like you mentioned, because it does exist if you wanted to play it that way. Yeah. But also, you could say like, I want to be a hero who is very much yin yang and darkness and light, and pull from those two separate categories. Mm-hmm. Um, and the system is designed where you can do that and grow over time. Perhaps like we've seen players who have picked up darkness in the beginning were villains in their stories that they created themselves and are now becoming heroes, and so they're picking up light side abilities. Mm -hmm. So it's really based around that story and developing the life of this hero, the the way of the hero. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that in mind, would it be fair of me to say that Pop... How similar or different would powers be to um, PBTA's moves? So they are so generally with like powered by the apocalypse moves, you'll see like your your ability does strictly this, and I think that based off of the GM level, you could definitely do that. Uh, for an example. Uh, with one of the strength moves, for example, it allows you to attack twice. Mm-hmm. And you could take it like that, but a creative player in GM can also use the flavor text to do different things with it. So, uh, for example, one of the things that you'll see in the system is that there are built-in abilities for things that you probably wouldn't have thought about with a, a standard power by the apocalypse system. Mm-hmm. And a good example of that is again with strength. If you have a hero who is incredibly strong, maybe they don't know how to open a car door successfully, you know, without actually pulling the door off of the hinges. So with the powers, there are different things that come in in uh, tow with that. Mm-hmm. So you can be super strong, but when you touch a cell phone, it shatters. You're going to need to pick up abilities over time. Mm-hmm or at the creation of your character to really balance out your character. Mm. And so one of the complementing moves with that is physical understanding so that you know how an object actually feels Mm -hmm. and uh, you can handle it with care. Yeah. Now with that, with that in mind, I would, I would like to do a bit of put of putting this kind of thing into practice. If you, if you will, um, I'm gonna give you a few na- I'm gonna give you a few names when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to supers in v- in various forms and I'd be curious to pick your brain as to what as to what sort of spread would be would be an a- would be a apt way to go to go with them. Okay. Um. So you meant you mentioned ba- you mentioned Batman, so I want to go with I want to go with a. With a di- with a different um, pulp hero, one one that's a bit more popular internationally than he, than he is in the states, and that is the Phantom. Okay. Uh, so give me some of the things that you think the Phantom is really good at. Um, the Phantom is, despite the, despite the costume, is ve- is very much in that old school old school um, pulp style adventurer. Um, Occasionally, do, occasionally does use firearms. Has a repu- has a reputation, the nickname of the ghost who walks. Um, and te- and um, if you see if you've if you've seen if you've seen the style of, of story in the in those old adventure serials, that's kind of what the Phantom leans into. Um, if that if that helps. Yeah. So I mean, one of the first ones, the first powers that I would say. A character like that would need would be a super suit, mm-hmm. uh, because you you t- instantly talked about the way that he dresses, and so the super suit in the game gives you an element of creating a hidden identity, mm-hmm. um, which is something that was really important to the system because what it means to be a hero is beyond just having the magic 
the the powers. I don't want to say magic because it's not all magic, mm-hmm. uh, but it is. Uh, it keeps your identity defined, and maybe that's an element that players want to explore. You oh. know, that super suit. Mm-hmm. And oh. does it do something special? Is it bulletproof? Uh, does it allow you to fly? Mm-hmm. With super suit and the system. Uh, one of the things that we've always done is give it a special ability, and that's written into the book. Mm-hmm. So if you're a character that erupts into flames, maybe it's fireproof. Mm-hmm. Um, also with trained powers, I think it makes sense for him to be able to shoot a gun mm-hmm. and to do it well and to know what he's doing. And probably martial arts mm-hmm. and instinctual fighting. Mm-hmm. Um Instinctual fighting is a unique ability where if that player gets attacked, they can instantly do a retaliation. Mm-hmm. So, again, this is about telling a story that makes sense, and it's it's uh, a story to empower people. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, I'll go. I'll go with some. I'll go with something a little a little bit more familiar. Um, Wolverine. Okay. Uh, so Wolverine would probably, I would probably put him in like biological to begin with. Mm-hmm. And that's because uh, regeneration is actually a power that you can pick up there. Mm-hmm. But then I would borrow from the trained abilities where uh, he's got some incredible strength. We could pull that from the strength category. We could give him, uh, let's see. Uh, There's something called herd immunity. Gives you a really good immune system where you can't be affected by sickness, disease, poisons, different things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's other abilities that will give you the ability to adapt to specific uh, situations. So maybe you find yourself with reduced air. I think that could be something good for Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, a weapon. Because what is Wolverine without his his iconic uh, claws. Mm-hmm. And so you can see how that borrows from a number of different superhero categories, but he's based in biological, so he would have access to that one incredible power, which we call the deadlock ability. Mm-hmm. So go, going, from that, going from that, I'd like to shift over into a DC, a DC representative. And since since you went with biological, I'll go with something a bit magical. Um, how would you how would you represent someone like John Constantine? Oh, Constantine, one of my favorites. AKA an excuse for Alan Moore to draw Sting. <laughs> <laughs> By his own admission, truth be told. So there are two categories that I would love to to put a character like that into. Mm-hmm. And one of them is divine powers and also prophecy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, as far as like weapons and the way that they would impact the world that you see with Constantine, like the ability to to hunt down vampires and and different things like that. Uh, you could see some things coming from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, maybe some darkness components because he's not exactly the the bright and shining hero that you think of. No, nope. um, I have I have always viewed Constantine's particular style of magic as somebody who is extremely extremely high risk high reward in terms of. The type, in terms of the types of spells that he will he will utilize, he's the he's the type he's the type of person who, if he was a bartender, would would um freestyle a bu- would freestyle um a bunch of drinks together and hope it doesn't explode. Yeah, with with that in mind, I would I would definitely classify him into ritual then, and that's actually my personal favorite category mm-hmm. because it provides a wide variety of narrative storytelling. And what I mean by that is when you think about creating rituals, they can have a variety of outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so, again, this is where we break that powered by the apocalypse mold where abilities are clearly defined 100%. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with ritual based, you can pick up the ability to create your own rituals where you work with your GM to uh, create the effects together. Mm -hmm. uh, but in contrast, rituals are also something that you can just snap your fingers and do in an instant. Mm -hmm. They have to be prepared, and because of that, they take time. Mm -hmm. And collection of materials, having the right things. If you're talking about spells, knowing the right words to say. Mm -hmm. So you can see how it um, can all come together to really... Uh, create the character in the way that you think and portray them. Mm -hmm. Now, since, since I, I like, I, given that I, given that I grew up in the nineties, I feel I'm obligated to give, a, to give a bit of love towards, Im, towards images way. So how would you handle something like spawn? Uh, Spawn, I could definitely see in the darkness category almost instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, Spawn, so one of the darkness abilities is the, like, you can travel through shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, you can reach out with, like, uh, tendrils of darkness. There is uh, the deadlock abil ability for the darkness type power is uh, called the Spear of Darkness. And basically what it does is it gives you some added stats uh, to your attacks, but also the ability extinguishes lights in your area. Mm -hmm. So it has that cool flavor text. Uh, part of what the GM guide will go through is it, the ability is called Spear of Darkness. Does it have to be a spear? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. The system is designed so that you write your character. If it's a whip of darkness, a bat of darkness, make it what, what fits for your character the best. Mm -hmm. I can... The um, one of the th obvious obviously with a character like Spawn, the um, power set has vi has varied quite a bit, but the approach the approach that I'd go with is just a baseline. Is Al Sim Al first off it it's this is focusing entirely on the Al Simmons that a lot of people are familiar with, um, the which in which in which the Hellspawn suit is is essentially a is essentially a sim is essentially a symbiote with him, um, so you have some energy abilities when it comes to necroplasm, a lot of um, a lot of controlling abilities when it comes to the, when it comes to the cape, as well as as well as the chains and the fact that in a lot of in a lot of the comics he te he tended to be a walking arsenal, just because yeah. just because of the background that he had and. As time as time went on, learning to le learning about the um, the heritage of previous ho previous um, hell spawns. Um, so with some with some of those, how would you how would you put those kind of things in? So I I think going back to the suit again, mm -hmm. what I would say is find an ability in the system that captures the essence of what you want the suit to do. So I, I think with the, the symbiote suit, uh, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is it helps protect him, and if he gets shot, you know, it helps him recover. So maybe you give it regeneration. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you give it the ability, like, that's truly what allows him to travel through shadows. Or uh, to send out those tendrils of darkness. Mm -hmm. Uh Darkness offers a unique power. It's it allows you to go into the shadow and kind of uh, know what to say to learn some lure someone to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a unique ability. Or it has another one that's called the Horror of the Dark, where you essentially become invincible in total darkness for up to five or ten minutes a day mm -hmm. in game. Uh, but you lose sentience in that time, so if you have allies in the darkness too, there's consequences with that. Mm -hmm. And what happens if it's over that time period in a day? You know, so it's really about telling that collaborative story. Uh, I keep saying that again, but uh, when I design characters for people, and they have someone that they are interested in playing, I ask them what's important to this character for you, mm -hmm. and then. I'll pull from that priorities list to create their character. Yeah. And it's it's not just a matter of creating that character for them right then, 
but also having a vision for how your character will grow over time mm -hmm. and what powers they'll pick up after that. Yeah. Now, I've leaned a little bit into into the magical end of, of supers in the last few entries, so I'll so I'll lean into a bit more of the high tech end of things, and the obviously the big one the big um, example in this instance would be um, Iron Man. All right, so two categories that I think Iron Man could really fall into. Uh, the first one that I would instantly go to is like your technological. Mm -hmm. But also we have a science category, and science has one of my favorite abilities in it. Uh, it's called the White Coat. Mm -hmm. And uh, because when you think about a, um, a lab or something, and you see the scientists running around, like nobody ever focuses and targets one of those, what's perceived as a background character, unless they're specifically looking for them. Mm -hmm. So with, with Iron Man, I think when he's in his day form, and he doesn't have any of his armor or anything on, like, the white coat ability is perfect, and what it does is it creates a situation where you are so severely underestimated that you become not the focus or the target. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with technological, you can get your the different types of high-tech weapons, your Siri ability, uh, where you could... You know, with the GM, ask questions, uh, pull from security cameras, technological abilities and powers just in general, like the ability to hack, to turn electronics that are connected to like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi off, on or manipulate them. Uh, engineering skills, you know, like we we think of engineering as a profession, but the ability to put something together and take it apart and know how the parts function together is really kind of amazing for a superhero. Mm -hmm. um, now I've co I've covered a fair bit I've covered a fair bit of Western ones, and I I'd be remiss if I didn't lean into the Japanese superhero subgenre that is Tokusatsu. And to that end, I'd like to I'd like to delve into a horror leaning a horror leaning Tokusatsu known as Garo. Now. So, Garo, which ha which was was originally live action and then later on got a cu got a couple um got a couple anime adaptations. Involves a or involves an order known as Makai Knights. The protagonist Saijima Koga, who also has the title of Golden Knight Garo, um, hunts a type of de a type of demon called Horrors, and the methods in the methods in doing so. Involve involve weapons and armor that use a material called soul metal. The cru the crux is his transformation involve that involves summoning the Garo armor is an armor completely made of soul metal, which is powerful but volatile to the point where it can only be safely worn for ninety nine point nine seconds. Okay. Uh, this one's a lot more interesting, and it actually, I would put this type of character into something called destiny-based powers. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about the weapons, uh, the deadlock ability for this superpower type is uh, called the prophesized blade. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about like these armor and weapons that are made out of, out of soul, uh, I think this is a, a perfect fit for it. The, the way that it's written is the blade has a destined purpose mm -hmm. and it has amazing abilities for using it for that purpose specifically. Yeah. But if you use it for anything other than that, maybe it shatters and breaks into a million pieces mm -hmm. or, or may maybe it's just a piece of, of rock to anything else. Yeah. Well, when it comes to, when it comes to soul metal, the, the thing that, the thing that's made very clear is that, is that the, is that one can control the weight of it based on one's will to the point where, while it still while it still maintains the same the same amount of hardness as it as a as a normal weapon of this of of a more mundane metal, um, 
it can be it can be as it can be as heavy as an anchor or as light as or as light as a, as a feather if if one has a strong enough will yeah so i can i can definitely see some strength adaptation in there as well mm -hmm. uh so probably a combination of that destiny uh and then there's a completely different category that talks about items and um, you, we could pull some s things from that as far as creating the weapon and the abilities mm -hmm. uh, where you could adapt the weight to, uh, like you were saying, make it as light as a feather for your super quick attacks or as heavy as an anchor. Uh, there is a transformation category that might be a good fit for some stuff there as well. And that allows you to touch things and essentially change their atomic components. Mm -hmm. um, it could be narrated like that or through science or magic, however you wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but to make it bigger or smaller, so in that sense I could see how that would also work with uh, weight and making it lighter or heavier. Mm -hmm. Now, the la the last one that the last one that I want to I want to dip into when it comes to this whole um, putting it putting it into practice is to go is is go is going going into the going into the ridiculous um, end of things. In the, with within the, within that kind of within that kind of approach, how would you how would you handle number? It's a bit of a, it's a bit of fortunate timing bringing this kind of thing up. But how would you handle the likes of Doctor Strange? Ah, uh, Doctor Strange. We we talked about that ritual based power, mm -hmm. and when I think about Doctor Strange, he is the perfect fit for it. Uh, having seen the most recent like Spider Man movie, for example. And the ritual going awry, mm -hmm. uh, because he was interrupted in the middle of it. Like these are the perfect types of things that go into that category. Uh, you you craft the spell, you set the circumstances up, something goes awry, and you have an effect that isn't quite the way you intended it. Mm -hmm. And of course, what is Doctor Strange without his cape that allows him to fly around? Mm -hmm. um, he also has his. Um, well, he had at one point the amulet that allowed him to control time. Yeah. And that's a component that you could add in here as well as a, an effect from an artifact that he had. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of games have 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 um, a means to to provide to provide a uh, provide some sort of limitation to more powerful abilities. Um or, or in some cases, some sort of extra effort type of system. For example, in Mutants and Masterminds, there was the whole thing with hero points. Do you have something similar to that within um, Way of a Hero? So there are a number of abilities that are available for players to pick up that essentially uh, completely cancel out other power types. And what I mean by that is, um, for example, there's an ability that if you name another target, that target cannot directly harm you. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, they try to punch you, their fist just grazes off of you like you're covered in oil. Or however you'd like to narrate it, maybe, maybe uh, it dissipates through you because you're incorporeal, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um so situations like that allow for a GM to create diverse villains that have a variety of different powers that players haven't come up against. Um, elemental, we think about that. You think about earth, water, lightning, all of those basics. But also, like, uh, maybe someone's smog. Maybe a villain they come up against is the essence of pollution. Mm -hmm. And a character that is incredibly strong, and uh, let's say they're like, uh, one Punch Man. Mm -hmm. One Punch Man punches a target and they are gone forever. Um, that's not going to necessarily work on a character that's made of gas or a character that's a spirit. So, 
the system is designed to create a variety of different types of powers that kind of work together as puzzle pieces and approaching characters and players with different types of missions with different objectives also creates a system where you're not just running and finishing things in one second maybe the mission is about gathering intelligence and as a character that can solve a problem by punching uh, and KOing a target in one hand going to be efficient for that type of a module. Mm-hmm. You know, probably not. The secret's going to be in creating characters that are diverse and um, really owning up to their strengths and weaknesses. Which I can I can certainly see. I can certainly see. Um, now one one other one other thing one other thing that can define a great deal of super's characters as a whole and superheroes as well is having is um how drawbacks work when it comes to when it comes to powers i already mentioned the whole time limit thing with with um garo or the or or some of the more ridiculous drawbacks that have been seen been seen in comic in comic books like the color yellow with the early days of green lantern <laughs> um or the, or the whole or the whole thing with the whole thing with kryptonite um how do how do you ma- how do you manage those sort of limitations to to make them work to make it work with the power system that you guys have so there are a number that are written into the system um, as far as like with strength, you are you can be incredibly strong, that's no problem, but you would have to potentially take other abilities. And that doesn't mean that a GM is going to hold players to that as well. You know, it's about creating that collaborative story. Mm-hmm. Uh, with darkness, there's this thing where when you travel through things and you're in the shadow realm, um, if something gets left there, it's forgotten and what we would probably call real life. Mm -hmm. So what's been interesting to play with is what happens when a, uh, a skull is left there and it's not just any skull, but it's a magical skull uh, with a spirit trapped inside of it. You know, does that turn into a crazy villain that you're going to have to fight three episodes later? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, So when you think about the powers and abilities, like, yes, so, it's it's this system of yes and mm-hmm. yes you can do these amazing things and there's going to be other things out there that are going to completely throw a wrench into everything that you were thinking. Yeah. Now with the with that kind of thing with that kind of thing in mind, one there is one there is one avenue of of um, powers that. Is always tricky for a, for a lot of games to de- to delve into, and that is mimicry because inevitably there's somebody who's going who's going to want to take a few pages from say ro- from say Rogue from X Men when it comes to power mimicry or even power theft. Yeah. Yep. Uh... So with the transformation ability, it allows you to steal, borrow, uh, use the powers of others. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can take additional uh, powers if you wanted to and collect their thoughts. You can look exactly like them if you wanted to. But written into there, there's a system of also like drawbacks as far as this thing's going to take time, or do you want to invest in making it instant? Mm -hmm. Is it going to harm or hurt the people that you're touching and and doing this from? And then there's also that GM component of, uh, for example, I was running a module once, and someone wanted to steal the thoughts of this incredibly brilliant man who had lived for thousands and thousands of years. And how does that single mind uh, of this person adapt to handling so much at once? Uh, ultimately, it just told a better story because at that point, they had to share the knowledge between a number of different people. Mm-hmm. So, I I think that with the 
way of a hero. There's a lot of directions for DMs as far as you could you could definitely tell a story where someone came in and solved the problem and in one go and they became all powerful and stole the abilities of all the the heroes in the world. But then there's that moral element of okay, if they just stole this person's powers and they can no longer use them, is is that a good thing or a bad thing? And how does the world and the rest of the, the heroes start to view that person? You know? Will it attract other types of villains that are worried about their powers getting stolen and suddenly they become a target for the rest of the world? Yeah. With that in so, the... Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I, I think that players like that who want to create these super powerful characters are going to be challenged by different types of modules because the way of a hero, like, yes, powers are awesome, but it's about the story that you tell together. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to with a, with a lot of the magic based powers, it's it's largely been um, rooted in ritual. And I'm cur I'm curious I'm curious if the if that that particular type would also be used for um, char for characters whose magic is far more na is far more natural, or they're using some something some sort of supernatural effect some sort of supernatural effect that is definitely not biological but not but not a full on ritual um something that instantly comes to mind is say iron fist yeah so there's a completely different category that I haven't even talked about uh that's called prophecy and it's basically when the powers that you're using are not from within yourself and uh, that one's really interesting because it's more up to chance. When you talk about high risk, high reward, mm -hmm. that would definitely fall into this category. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, you are borrowing from the powers of something that is beyond yourself. So one of those abilities is like if you're in a dire circumstance and there is absolutely nothing that you can do, uh, you can allow yourself to become like an avatar of whatever is giving you your powers. Mm -hmm. And so for a few brief moments, you lose control and are capable of doing extraordinary epic things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the drawback is that you don't know what the DM is going to have your character also do while they're being controlled by this other power. Yeah. So there's some cool, cool elements in there for different types of magic. Um, uh, of course, there's darkness, there's light. Light is where you see most of your like healing abilities. Mm -hmm. But also, it's that yin-yang with the darkness. Mm -hmm. So, we've talked a lot about powers, but there's also the setup for a world in the, in the mm -hmm. game. And uh, with that, there's something that's called the Association of Heroic Affairs. Mm -hmm. You'll see that we love to create these analogies like woe for way of the hero, and aha for the Association of Heroic Affairs. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I like to give it to that drawback of like the bang kapow that we would see in like the Batman of of previous years. Yeah, onomatopoeia. Exactly, exactly. And so elements in there create this vibrant world where when you go into the Association of Heroic Affairs, there are no shadows because typically darkness is a power that is used by villains. Mm -hmm. And you'll see more light-based heroes. So... Uh, there's that cool element and flavor into the world. And could could a party come into a completely different world that was more based off of uh, the boys, for example, where heroes are arrogant, cocky, and there's a lot of collateral damage? Of course. Um, the system is really designed to be the vehicle that you just deliver a good story with. With now, um, one th since you kind of hinted about it earlier, I'd like to touch on advancement and how and how the, and how that would that would work. I know that because in obviously in PBTA you have the whole thing of of um getting advanced moves every, every few bits of experience or so or some similar kind of checklist. 
but how are you how are you going about it yeah so you have uh basic stats which in the system are quick mind soul conviction brute and presence mm -hmm. and you can see how those would easily relate to uh typical stats that you see in and role-playing games additionally there are what are called specialty skills and when you complete modules uh, the, D the DM at the end of the game can award skill points in these. So, for example, uh, they are precision, luck, endurance, fame, wealth, and reputation. Mm -hmm. So, if you are in a highly public circumstance where uh, people are recording you and you save tons of hostages on camera, maybe at the end of that scene, your DM gives you two points of reputation. Well, you can use these points much like you would with stats in a regular role. Uh, so, for example, you're walking down the street and you go up to a newspaper stand and say, hey, I have no money on me. Could I have a paper? Uh, for that situation, you could roll like reputation and they recognize you because of, of that reputation that you built and they give you a paper for free. But at the after you've collected seven of these different specialty skills, uh, you could turn it into a point where you could buy a regular superpower if you wanted. So with that, you can grow your hero through these secondary specialty skills, mm -hmm. uh, or you can cash them and gather additional powers. Mm -hmm. So with that system, uh, we've tested it out. We've run campaigns with a variety of different superheroes at different levels. Nobody even noticed that they were playing with different levels because, again, it's about that collaborative storytelling. But players love getting rewarded for hard work and for doing things that are epic and awesome. Mm -hmm. And so giving these specialty skills at the end of these, these missions, uh, people really love it. And it rewards them. It grows their character. Uh, another one that's been really good is Endurance. When players have used the same power and ability multiple times over and over and over and been successful with it, like a good way to reward that is with endurance. Or did they find a lot of uh, money? Like, did they find a, a shipwreck in the middle of the ocean? And maybe there's tons of wealth there to be had. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that you had one of the things you had mentioned is having having a strong leaning towards the Saturday morning cartoon type of uh, type of heroes. Um, within the within what could be considered the default setting of the Association of Heroic Affairs, is that is that something that you're le that you're leaning on quite quite a bit? So when we talked about origin stories in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh. I, I thought that was funny because with Way of the Hero, this has been something that's been in my mind since I was probably a child. Mm -hmm. And the first the first hero that I had ever built in my mind uh, was a hero named Powers. And so this guy was traveling along through a park and he found a four-leaf clover. And so he had the ability to make a single wish. And he wished that he could... Uh, basically have the ability to use any type of power once. So he could breathe fire, but only once. He could fly, but only once. He could summon a tornado, but only once. And, uh, of course, I was heavily influenced by Saturday morning cartoons like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. uh, Power Rangers. I mean, you can only imagine. So... When I narrate the game, that's where my basics come from. I enjoy giving people the empowerment to make huge differences in a world uh, where we may not necessarily have that same ability in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, giving people the ability to do that, that's where my influence as a, as a DM comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you'll see that in a lot of the artwork specifically with, again, those onomatopoeias, the... Uh, the way that heroes are depicted as champions of justice. Um, even in in the book, there's the Hero's Creed, where we give, and it's not the end-all, be-all. If you wanted to run a campaign where things were different, you could. But it talks about what it means to be a hero. And 
protecting the innocent, putting your life on the line, being selfless. And I, I think that these are true elements of what we've seen with the Saturday morning cartoons component. Yeah. And uh, now, what are you shooting for as far as the total page count? I know, I know that that's going to that's going to change because of some of the stre- some of the stretch goals. Yeah, I, I think right now we're aiming at around 160 to 180 pages. And I can I can certainly get be- I can certainly get behind that. And what are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a hard date, but a general area. Uh, so one of the things that was important to me is we know that there are issues coming from things that are published in China right now, uh, just because shipping is taking so long and there are so many delays and things like that. So prior to even going on Kickstarter, I identified a number of of different publishers that were local. Mm-hmm. And so that should really help speed up the timeline. Uh, August, by August, at the very latest, the end of August, is is what we're aiming for. Mm-hmm. Which I, I can... Which just happens to be the month of my birthday, so... <laughs> It'll be the best birthday present ever, I can <laughs> promise you. <laughs> and, I won't ha- and I won't have to deal with trick candles. <laughs> or someone committing the sin of giving me chocolate cake. True. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the madness at play here. Yeah, it's been a blast. And, you know, one of the things that's really unique about our Kickstarter is uh, that we're actually hosting a number of games. Mm-hmm. So, um, as one of the um, the rewards for backing on the Kickstarter right now, you can actually get a ticket to an entire weekend of a game that we are, are running in at the end of April. And um, I think that that's a really unique thing you don't see with Kickstarters all the time. Because as I've, I've alluded to many times during this, this conversation, you know, it's about telling that collaborative story and having a good time with other people. And I will cert- I will certainly be looking forward to it. Um, of course, any time you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!